to another episode of Next to Madison. On today's episode, I am sitting down with a professional hockey player who has two Stanley Cups under his belt and so much more to come. And I'm so excited to dive into his life and hear what he's been up to and what he's going to be doing and also just kind of diving into the winning mindset and, and what it really takes to compete at a professional level. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome my guest, Dave Bolin. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, of course. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. How's I'm, the I'm always up for great. What's that? How's the quarantine going for you guys? It's going, it's going. I'm in uh, London, Ontario, so I'm about two hours uh, west of Toronto. Uh, kind of in between Toronto and Detroit border. Um, so we're just uh, hanging out. Uh, basically just go take our dog. We look forward to taking our dogs for walks and uh, looking for the next TV show to watch. So uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty boring, but hopefully it'll be over soon. I know, exactly. So let's talk about your um, your career as a hockey player. Like that's gonna yeah, be, yeah. where did you start? Uh, so I started when I was, I probably started hard hockey when I was about five or six years old, uh, I wanted to skate. My older brother was uh, was playing and I saw him playing. I was like, oh, I told my parents I wanted to play and they're like, okay, well, go ahead. Um, so they put me in the hockey. Uh, it's hot, when hockey is expensive, so it's, it's a lot, a lot of money to play. And uh, But we, my parents, they're just a blue collared family. Uh, my dad worked, my mom stayed at home. Uh, it's so having two kids in hockey, it's, it's, it's expensive, but uh, we made it work, uh, so I, Kind of kept on going. I got to about uh, age 10, 11. I started getting better. Um, I played minor hockey in Toronto. Uh, from minor hockey, uh, I went up to the OHL. So the OHL uh, is the Ontario Hockey League. It's compiled of uh, Ontario. And then there's the WHL, that's the Western League. And then there's the Quebec League, that's mostly out of Quebec. Um, so they're all three are combined are called the CHL. Okay. Um, so uh, I got drafted to the London Knights. Uh, I went, I think it was sixth overall, seventh overall in the draft uh, out of about 100, 200 kids um, out of Ontario. So it was, it was a big thing. Um, so I went to London, played in London for three or four years. Uh, I won a Memorial Cup. Uh, so the Memorial Cup is a it's probably one of the hardest trophies to win. Uh, you only have three years to win it. Uh, and we won one in London. Um, yeah. Uh, we had a really good team that year. Um, I got drafted to Chicago. Uh, I went to Chicago uh, 32nd overall. So in the second round uh, of the NHL draft. Uh, actually, I also won a World Junior uh, with Team Canada. And that was just before. That was, the same, that was just a year after we won the OHL Cup. Um, so those were other two, uh, championships that I won. Um, and then I went up to Chicago, uh, played with Chicago for about eight, seven, eight years. Uh, won two Stanley Cups, uh, went off to Toronto, uh, Florida, and then, uh, my career was kind of cut short from injuries and I had to retire. So, uh, that was kind of, it's kind of my uh, whole career in a, in a nutshell shell uh you can go on but uh but yeah it was a uh, it was a fun experience and uh it was it was it was, it was fun yeah well i mean it's extremely impressive so how was it you know you your whole life you've played hockey you've been kind of in the fight with all these amazing awards how was it when that ended uh to be honest when it ended i was fine with it um okay. i won two Stanley Cups, some Memorial Cup, and I had some championships under my belt. So I, I, was, I was happy with it. Uh, sad still, because uh, winning is fun, and winning another kind of Stanley Cup would be great too. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but uh, but, uh, but when, when, it, when it came down to it, and then I had to retire, uh, I was easy to put it away and hang them up, because uh, I won two Stanley Cups, and, and I hit my goal of, of winning a Stanley Cup. And that's something that you, you dream of uh, when you're a kid out yeah. playing like roller hockey and hanging out with like your friends. Uh, we used to use like a uh, like a the uh, construction pylons to be like the Stanley Cup. So <laughs> like 
So yeah, so so we uh, we kind of uh, I hit my dream. I did what I what I wanted to do. So I I, I was I was fine with with hanging the skates up. <laughs> I mean that's it's just so amazing. So what does it feel like to win a Stanley Cup? I mean that's got to be a feeling nobody can explain. No, it's tough. It's tough to explain. But once uh, once it happens, like it, it was it was huge. And it, like you go through about eighty two games during the season, and then you go. Through the whole season, you probably go around about 100, 110 games. So your body's pretty much broken down, and yeah. your your bones, everything's hurting. Guys are playing with like broken fingers, broken hands, broken feet, uh, like stitches everywhere. So by the end of it, you're you're you just just to to hoist this Stanley Cup over your head is is pretty satisfying and pretty uh pretty upwarming. That it's like hey, like I did this and I accomplished it, and like it's it's finally here. Yeah, and so was it 2003, what was the year, 2010, 2013? Yeah, 2010 and 2013, yeah. And didn't you score the winning goal in 13? Uh, yeah, in 2013 I scored the winning goal. Uh, we, uh, we, we were down 2-1 uh, to Boston, okay. uh, and with literally about 17 seconds, uh, we had two big goals to put us up 3-2, and Boston was kind of thinking, hey, this game's done, we're, we're just going to, and, and we were thinking, hey, like, let's go back to Chicago and win it at home. Our first Stanley Cup won in Philadelphia. So we, uh, <clears throat> we, um, we were kind of like, oh, well, let's, let's, let's go to Chicago and win it in Chicago. And, like, it'd be great to do it in Chicago. But, um, but doing it in Boston was great. And uh, doing it the way we did was even better. <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that's just a, just the energy you must have been feeling in that arena is. Oh, well, I think just the energy of. Like we're like shit. Like we, we we're going back home. We have to play one more game, but in 17 seconds, you go from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs to to be like, oh, okay, now we just won the Stanley Cup. Let's party. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does hockey have as many like um, after the guys retire because you guys do take so much like blows to the body and the head? Is there a mind? Is it does it affect the mind and like the overall wellness of the players? Like once they've retired, like a football. Uh, oh, for sure. Uh, like myself, I've got uh, back problems. I've got ankle problems. Um, I've had a few concussions, so I've uh, I've probably broken most of my fingers and there's stitches and teeth and everything. By the time you're done, you're. It's pretty funny when you look at like your injury report and it's just like it's like a CVS. Uh, CVS receipt that just goes on and on and on of how many injuries. So it does, it does take a toll on your body and you kind of got to keep up like <clears throat> with this quarantine right now, it's kind of tough because I normally go see my therapist to get uh, work on my back and ankle and just to keep me intact. And, but uh, it's a little tough right now when you can't go see anybody. Uh, so you're going to kind of get to do a few things on your own. Uh, I'm not really good at doing things on my own. I kind of like it when yeah. a therapist does the massages and takes care of me, but uh but yeah, but it, like by the time a hockey player is, you're done. Like I played, I think ten years. Uh, just out of ten years, I'm like I'm pretty sore. Some guys play twenty years, and like it's uh, it takes a toll on your body. Well, yeah, of course. And so you are actually going to go back and work for the Blackhawks now, right? Yeah, so that's what I'm hoping. I was during this uh, just before all this uh, coronavirus came down and everything came into effect. I was hoping to have my visa by now and moving back to Chicago and uh, working for the Hawks. Uh, I love Chicago. Uh, like my, <clears throat> my, uh, my kind of like last teenage years when I was 19, 20, uh, I was in Chicago to about 28 and uh, I fell in love with the city and uh, like I just, I miss it. I miss the food, the people and the great times. So uh, I'm hoping to move back there and start doing something with the Hawks and, uh, and get back to work. Yeah, what are you gonna be doing for them? Uh, I don't know yet. They're not really sure. Um, they're, they're, they're hopefully, have something uh, something creative. Uh, I'm good with whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, for the last three or four years, I've been kind of retired, but I was still getting paid through uh, my because I was injured and uh, I had an injury, so uh, I was still getting paid by the, my team. Okay. So it was kind of, it was kind of nice. I was still getting paid, but uh, <laughs> it came to an end. But uh, but uh, I just want to. Uh, so so the last four years, I've just been golfing and hanging out with friends and traveling so uh uh, i want to stay in hockey i love hockey and uh i love chicago and i love to give back to the chicago fans and and do better i can to to help them out 
Right, absolutely. And do you still have friends that are playing for the Black <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, few, there's still a few of the guys that are still there um, that, that played. So like Jonathan Taze, Patrick King, Brent Seabrook, uh, Corey Crawford. Uh, a lot of those guys are still playing for the team. So it's always nice going back there uh, and hanging out and seeing the guys have a few beers and reminiscing yeah. about the old days. Yeah. <laughs> So how, what does it take to get drafted into the NHL? Uh, it takes a lot. Uh, like, uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, like, I'm, right now, my daughter, she lives with her mother in Toronto, and she comes down here for a week, and we've got to do homework. And I'm, like, trying to do grade, home, grade one homework is like, oh, my God, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty tough. <laughs> but uh, it's funny. But, uh, but, but my, my whole – I wasn't really a student of – school I was kind of a student of hockey <clears throat> um, I always school was fun I love school but uh, it wasn't one of my uh, top things to do but uh, but I but uh, hockey like once I was done school I would race home and go down to the local rink and put my skates on and go play hockey uh, wow. homework was kind of a, a last thing to do for me but uh, my, my thing was just playing hockey so my buddies were out playing hockey I'd be out there playing hockey from School's done at three thirty. I'd be out there till about eight o'clock, just screwing around, playing hockey with all the guys. Uh, it takes a lot of work. You gotta, you gotta be pretty dedicated. Um, yeah. Like most, uh, once you get to high school, uh, a lot of my friends were hanging out, going to parties. <clears throat> um, I was playing hockey, so most of my Friday, Saturdays were all at the hockey rink. So I was always playing hockey. You're doing something evolved with hockey, and uh, that was kind of my. That was my thing. Uh, I wasn't out partying or going to uh, going out hanging with friends, going to movies a lot. Uh, I was at the rink and doing a lot of work with uh, with that. So it takes a lot. You, you've got to be pretty dedicated, and you've got to be into it. Right. And so, what do you do um, to stay in shape now? Ooh, <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, I, I'm I'm pretty lazy. Uh, I should be staying in shape. Uh, I take my dogs for a walk. <laughs> But um, it's something. I play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not laying on the couch. Uh, so like, uh, we, we bought a Peloton. Well, I'll see how many times I use that. <laughs> right. But uh, my my fiance loves it, so she she's on it a lot. But uh, we actually used to play during the winter time. We played pick up hockey with a lot of the guys. So I'm not, I, when I played. I, when I played, I wasn't really a, a gym kind of connoisseur. I didn't love the gym, but I had to do it. Uh, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> but playing hockey and going out and just screwing around with some friends um, with uh, on like Tuesdays and Thursdays we would do uh, is a great workout and you're sweating by the time of it you're 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 drenched and your whole body's hurting so it's a, it's a great workout and I I still love the game and still want to play it so uh, I kind of do that and I play golf golf's uh, golf's good golf's fun so golf is fun it's the only sport that you can really play and drink <laughs> yeah. It's kind of – and drive. <laughs> yeah, golf – what's that? It's just always great getting out there. The one thing golfers have in common, if you ever ask anybody if they play golf, it's the same response every time. Yeah, but I don't play as much as I, you know, I want to. Or yeah, I yeah. don't get out there enough. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> the whole process to get out of the yeah. Oh, it is. It is. And it takes four hours to play. So whenever I tell my fiance, she's like, oh, how long are you going to be at golf again? Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's a great, like, bonding and networking and business. And it is. Like, it, it's, it's great. Like, and, like, most of the time we'll walk the course. And it's a good, pretty good workout by the time you're swinging and you walk and do a whole thing. It's a, it, it is fun. It's, it's, it is nice. And it's a, it, like you said, it's a great networking. And you meet people. And. Yeah. You meet a lot of new people. Like I met just from joining one course to another course. Uh, I've met so many people and so many new friends uh, out of it. So it's like uh, a lot of people are like, well, "Golf's boring. Like, why would you want to play golf?" And like, well, I mean, golf is actually pretty fun. It gets you out of the house for four or five hours, and <laughs> you're out. So yeah, and, and you, you get drink. a drinks, and oh yeah, like, yeah, you really can't go wrong with it, right? Yeah. So it's a so, fun sport. So I think everybody wants, or at least I want to know, like traveling so much on the road as a professional athlete, like, do you have any good road stories you can share with us that are like 
<clears throat> uh, it was, it was always, well, you're, you're, you're around, you're, you're around 20 dudes, guys, and you're always hanging out and there was always fun times. Uh, <clears throat> we'd always, uh, there'd be always be one, uh, you know how you, when you go to your hotel and you have, uh, you have the breakfast, they keep the breakfast, uh, thinking that your knob at your door. Yeah. Uh, like you can like put down what you want. Uh-huh. So, uh, so we used to steal guys and take them and we just mark everything down and be like, Hey, like 6am. So most of some of the young guys, we'd steal them and like, we put down, we we want everything on the menu. So they people would show up at like 6am with like five or six carts of food and be knocking on the door and the, the young kid would open the door and be like, well, I didn't order this. And they're like, well, you ordered it. It was on your doorknob and like, late last night. So they just come in with like orders of food of like six or seven hundred dollars worth of food. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did they had oh, yeah. to pay for it, did they? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. There's tons of there's tons of little stories. Um, I don't think what else. There's always the leader when you you put water in a big barrel and a big big uh, like a garbage thing, and you knock on the door and they oh, open yeah. the door and the water goes. <laughs> So yeah, it was some funny ones. So it was always, it, it, there were always good times, uh, fun. Uh, you just, that's the one thing you do miss when you do leave the game is, is getting on the plane with all the guys and going to LA, coming to LA and, and getting settled in and getting ready and go for a nice dinner. And so it, it, it is kind of now when you look back, it, it, it's fun and it's nice being done, but you do miss those, those kind of interactions and, being around the guys all the time. Right, and do you guys travel on your own plane? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just, you, we, we just roll up to the tarmac and someone takes your car and you hop on the plane and we got a pretty, and that, you do kind of miss that as well when you leave the game. When you go to a normal airport, you're like, oh geez, you gotta sit in line, you gotta do the security, customs, like all this bullshit. Like when yeah. we, we, we get, we get on our plane and there'd be three or four stewardess and you come on the plane and you'd have it'd be a big buffet with like sushi, steaks, lobster. There's everything. And then once you're done, someone would come get it and be like, "Oh, do you want dessert? What's for dessert?" You'd have cheesecake, ice cream. Oh yeah, it was. It's it's pretty nice. Well, that's the one thing about being a professional athlete. You're always working out, so you can kind of eat like a kid in a way. Yeah. So like we like. It was unbelievable how much food we'd have at like like our pregame meals or dinners. We would have <clears throat> like a room of like a ballroom full of food and like anything that was anything that you thought would be in that room and you like it's it's crazy how much food. Yeah, I can imagine. And how did you guys fly back that night after the games or did you stay? Uh, most most of the times we'd fly back if it's close. So if, if it's like if we're going from Chicago to LA. Um, and we play either a day or two after we would uh, we would stay we would stay over just because of time difference and getting home and it'd be it screw up your uh, your sleeping so but but most of the time we just leave right after the game get on the plane and head right back. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah, how was yeah. it, what was it like in the off season? Uh, off season is just you 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 work out so from Monday to Friday I'd be at the gym for about two or three hours. Uh, doing what you need to do. Uh, like June, July, you kind of stay in the gym, uh, do everything you can in the gym. Um, towards August, you start getting back in the ice uh, and getting all your game and getting uh, getting getting your feet and everything back into uh, into the ice uh, and back into working. So uh, and then you, you kind of go off ice on ice uh, August to September, and then by the time you know it's 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 pretty quick once you're you're. By the time you're done to getting back into it, it, it comes quick. Yeah, the hockey season's long, isn't it? Where oh yeah, it? yeah. So you probably go from like if you do if you do go all the way, you go from October to June to about middle or end of June, and then you think about it, July and August, and then September, you you're, you're back at training camp. So it's a it's definitely a grueling job. Oh yeah, it. yeah. It's it's a grind. It's uh, like it, it takes up a lot of your uh, a lot of your time so you're, you're pretty dedicated you have to be dedicated to it so but it was uh it was fun and i appreciate hockey and the fans and everything that chicago and everyone did because it, it's it was i give a 
I had a great time doing it and some fun. Yeah. And how was it um, when you were, how was it like dating as a professional athlete? Like when you were younger? Uh, not really much. Like for me, it wasn't uh, like I was with someone and then uh, like they, they, you, you, for most guys, if guys, some guys would meet some uh, people outside, like if they're not in Chicago. So their, their dates would fly in, fly out. So you'd, they'd see them for like a little bit of time and then they'd, they'd go home. Um, so yeah, so they, and like, you can never go see them because you, you're in your city, you gotta, you gotta play hockey, you're dedicated to the game. So they'd always have to come see you, right? So, uh, it's pretty funny, you'd see all these girls come in and then they leave and then come in and they leave. <laughs> so. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, is if, it's almost another de- type of dedication if you're gonna be a woman that dates a professional athlete because you travel so much you move around so much so it's kind of hard yeah. to maintain your own career have you noticed yeah it is it, and it is and like even if you have a family too um huh. like you gotta take your your like if you have a family and you're in chicago and later that year you're like oh you get you're getting traded to from chicago to la well now you're gonna pick up and go to la so either the family moves with you and your kid moves and goes to another school or the family kind of the wife and kid will stay in uh, Chicago, maybe finish out the year and then eventually move to LA. But it's a, it is, it's, it's a, it's, it's a lot of moving around and <clears throat> like some guys stick with the team for four years. They can do that and then move to another team. So you don't really move around, but there's some guys that go to one year contracts and play one year in LA and then maybe one year in New York and maybe one year, so it's a it's a grind and it's it's a lot of moving around and you're, you're kind of just moving your life from different cities and renting and so yeah it's 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 it is a grind. Yeah, and what is the average age for retirement? Is it thirty? Uh, I think like I think the average years of playing I think it's like four or five years. Yeah, because like, it's it, I, like yeah, so like I think I think it's around there. I'm not sure what the average age of retirement is. I never really looked that up, but. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a grind, and it's by the time you're done, you're kind of like, oh, yeah. you miss it, but you're kind of you're kind of like, oh, I'm done. It's nice time to relax and enjoy life. But yeah, yeah. And how were the parades when you guys won? Like, the uh, they were crazy. Um, the first parade, like we did not know, we didn't know how many uh, like how many fans were going to be there. Um, <clears throat> so we came, we flew back and partied for about two or three days straight. Um, <laughs> it's just a, a huge, but yeah, it's, it's pretty funny, like just the, the partying and everything, but uh, we all had like our own buses and <clears throat> we went down, uh, I think it was Washington Street that takes you from the United Center all the way downtown to uh, Millennial, Millennium Park. Okay. Um, and from, basically from the United Center all the way down, they said that, I think they said, I'm not sure about the first parade, but I know the second one, they said there was over like two and a half million people. It was crazy. And like people were like up in the buildings, throwing confetti. Um, like, and then you go down like these side streets and then these side streets were packed all the way down too. So it was like, it was unbelievable the amount of fans and people throwing beers at you and then you throwing beers yeah. at other people. And like, it was, it was fun. It was a blast. Like, and then, uh, and then we get to the, to, to the main stage and then, everybody swarms in and the crowd like the first one was on Michigan Ave and the crowd went from um if you know you know know Chicago pretty good or no uh not too well but I know Michigan yeah so like if you don't know where the like you know Michigan Ave and where the water is that that bridge there so our stage just went there and then it went down to Millennial Park and the line like it went it took up the whole street Michigan Ave and went all the way down to like Millennium Park and people were just rammed and it was crazy like it was unbelievable to see that and it was, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, because it's one thing, I mean, you guys are playing for the city. It's, it's really playing for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, it, but there's Chicago fans all over the United States. It's like, it's crazy. And, like, I'm pretty sure, like, people flew in just for that, too. So, and that, like, that, that 2010 Cup, it took, their last Cup was, uh, I think it was 49 years ago. So it was almost 50 years that they hadn't won a Cup. So it was a big, yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, and so you became like kind of the town celebrity. celebrity. What's that? You were the city celebrity for a while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I How think we all were. <laughs> yeah. So we had some fun. It, it, like 
Chicago is just like if you if you're not doing good, don't come out. Don't 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 see the fans. Uh, they'll let you know. But if you're on top, if you're on top, they they'll praise you and they love you. Uh, but I love Chicago and. The fans, like the people, were, were always great to us. Uh, whenever we went out for dinner or anywhere, so uh, they were always great. So, how was that when you guys were all out for dinner? Because obviously, when you're out, you want to just do your thing, and like, were you guys bugged? And how did you handle it? Uh, yeah, we, we always get bugged here and there. Like, someone comes up and says, "Hey, great, thank you very much for everything." Uh, but they're always respectful, and yeah. they're never uh, yeah. they're never like, "Hey, beat it, uh, let's let's get a picture here," or like. <laughs> nobody's ever rude or anything so uh like whenever i'd go out for dinner and be around fans like they'd always come up and be like hey don't mind if i get a picture please and as long as they're polite and everything you know yeah. we don't mind it it's just when yeah. all the drunk ones come around they start putting their hand on you and <laughs> picking your buddy and like start grabbing you but uh but it, it was always fun and like it it, it 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 was always good and just meeting the fans and talking to them and getting their experience of hey like where were you during the stanley cup and what bar were you at and how crazy was it? Uh, hearing some of their stories is actually pretty cool too. Well, yeah, because it's you get kind of the behind the scenes of what's going on because you guys are so yeah. really focused on yeah. like the game. So do um, you have any aspiration to maybe coach one day? Uh, I don't know about coaching. Uh, maybe it's, it's a lot of work doing being a coach. Like it's uh, – <clears throat> it takes a lot. Like you're, you're at the rink most of the, all your day. Uh, you get there – like 7 a.m. and you don't leave that place until about five or six because um, you got to kind of come up with everything and you got to do you're, you're you're the you're the head guy and you got to be behind everything. Um, so it, it'd be it'd be tough because uh, I because like when I was playing you're you're kind of at the rink all day but not as much. Uh, you go there for about four or five hours, do your work and leave. Uh, coach gets there early. He's the last one to leave. Um, they got to you got to put a little a lot of work in. Uh, so maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I have my daughter, so I want to spend a lot of time with her and, and be around her a lot and watch her grow. Um, so it, it would be a tough thing. Uh, but if, if something came around and it sounded good, uh, I'd, I'd think about it. Right. Absolutely. And so yeah. if you don't end up coaching, what do you think you're going to do? Gonna- uh, I don't know if it's just an ambassador role or uh, scouting or, or something just along the lines of, uh, of doing uh, outside work, charities, um, going to events, um, just a lot of everything, coming to games and greeting fans. Uh, I would, I'm up for anything, uh, whatever they have in, in mind and whatever they think, uh, I'd be in for it. <laughs> right. Maybe you could go be a caddy, a golf caddy too. I could be a golf caddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, just don't, I, I, I just don't know about carrying the bags <laughs> yeah this is right you'd be like wait a second the, the time yeah. has changed um so did you guys i have to you know obviously i do comedy you've seen me but um yeah 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 because in college i had we had a hockey team you know that was good um and we always which had college a, well so university of denver was my first i went there for a year yeah yeah transferred out to bentley in boston oh, okay Yep. Yeah, so they were both D1. I mean, Denver was a lot better. Um, yeah, yeah. But you always had the infamous puck slots. <laughs> you guys have these? Oh, they're always, I think the, the – That's what they're called, think, right? <laughs> uh, they call them puck sluts or puck bunnies or something like that. Puck, puck, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're always, like, it's – it's. I think it's I can't, I think it's kind of with any sport. I think – I'm not sure what they call them for baseball or football, but uh, baseball is it? I think basketball's jersey chasers. <laughs> lacrosse, lacrosse is lacrosse tutes. Okay, I, actually, I, I, I thought I saw you on Instagram playing lacrosse. Yeah, I, I I played lacrosse, so my brother actually has a bounce back, and I was like, oh, I got to get my. Oh no way! So so I played lacrosse all growing up. Uh, I was actually a better lacrosse player than I was hockey player. Well, you made the great move financially, though. <laughs> I did, I did. Well, that's when, when it came down to the OHL, uh, my coaches were like, do you want to play hockey or do you want to play lacrosse? I was like, well, there's a lot more money in hockey. I'll take hockey. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that you had that option. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I was going to – so I got drafted. I was actually drafted in the first round of a junior A draft here in, in Ontario. And so I was either going to go play lacrosse or hockey, see which one went well, but hockey was going a lot better and uh, – like you said, the pay was a lot better, so I stuck with that one. 
I know. And it's interesting, like lacrosse, I mean, it's growing. They have all these leagues, but I don't know if the money's caught up. I mean, maybe that, you know, Paul Rabil, Rabil, is that his name? He started the Premier Lacrosse League, the PLL. No, I don't really know. But, uh, but like they have the, but they have the NLL, right? The National Lacrosse League. Yeah, or the MLL, Major League. Was oh, that the MLL? And then another one. But they don't pay well. But I think this guy did a new structure. He got like a billion dollars from Google or something. And oh, no way. Yeah, and, and the players basically, like, they got the low pay that lacrosse players usually do. But they also yeah. get ownership into Oh, that's cool. Oh, well, that's awesome. So that might that's great. change it. But, yeah, yeah. this is a great game. But, yeah, hockey is definitely financially more popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true which is always you know is always the the key thing so what do you so besides hockey besides the cross like what are what are some of your other passions that drive you um those are like hockey lacrosse golf those are my three nice cup um i know i'm at my brother's and this is my niece's cup i think this i was gonna say i think my daughter has the same cup as you is it sophia <laughs> I think I think that's who it is. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, oh, hey, I like. I drop hey, nothing wrong. I I kind of like those cups too. They have, they're, they're they're nice cups. Uh huh. Um. So uh, basically, just hockey, lacrosse. Uh, well, not as much lacrosse now, now but golf. Uh, they te- they take up my time. Uh, there's those are uh, kind of the uh, the things that. Well, mostly golf now uh, and hockey will be uh, coming soon. But I, I kind of get I, – I golf about uh, four or five times a week, three or four times a week and wow. go on golf trips. Yeah, so, uh, so I'm a member I'm, – I'm, I have I'm three I'm – I have three courses here in London that I'm a member at. And then I'm a member in, uh, in Arizona at a course called Whisper Rock. So when it gets cold here, we'll normally shoot down there for a week or two, golf, then come back. So we'll get yeah. our fix in. All right. Did yeah. Play golf? What's that? Does she play golf? Your fiance? No, 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 no. She doesn't like golf. You got to get her out there. It could be a good couple activity. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is it? <laughs> it could be a good thing if you don't yell at her if she has a bad shot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> No, she, I think she said she was going to try it. She was going to try and get it, but I, I don't think she'll like it. She might. Maybe. I mean, we'll I remember my, in, I think I was in sixth, yeah, it was like sixth grade. My grandparents had retired in this golf community in North Carolina, and they had like the crappiest clubs. <laughs> and they, they were like, here, take these clubs, go to the driving range, don't come back till you can hit the ball properly. Yeah. yeah. If you want to be successful in business you have to know how to golf. And that's I was smart. Like, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how about a lesson from a player? Yeah. <laughs> Just throw me to the wolves. Here you go. <laughs> what happened was I developed bad habits. Whatever you could do to hit the ball, but you weren't using proper form and proper form. No. And then you got to go back to it. Yeah. So if you yeah, yeah. Get, her, get her a coach before or teach her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she'll, she'll have a coach for sure because – I can't. I, I, I'm a little too tough. We went to go play tennis one time. And I was like, what are you doing? You can't do that. Like, I'm pretty uh, straightforward instead of beating around the bush. And so, yeah. She's like, I, she goes, What's up? Where'd you guys meet again? Uh, we met in Toronto, actually. We met through a, a mutual friend uh, in Toronto. So she, uh, she lived in Toronto when I was in Florida and we kind of connected and, uh, when I was still playing in Florida. So we kind of connected and uh, she was saying, like you said, like she'd fly in and uh, Christmas time, we'd have a break, and I'd, uh, I'd fly back home to Toronto. Um, and then uh, we kind of hit it off, and things have been great. So. I mean, she's a great girl. When I met her, I'm like, this woman's amazing. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Uh, she's great with my daughter, great with uh, my family. So my daughter comes down for a week, and she helps out and does a lot with her. So she's, uh, she's great and great for me. Keeps me on the uh, straight and narrow. And, uh, but, yeah. Right. And when are you guys going to get married? Uh, well, we were, we we're kind of, uh, thinking of a few things. We don't know yet. She kind of just likes being engaged. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, so it always is. Right. So being a, um, in the professional 
you know, being a professional athlete, you've probably met countless celebrities. I've seen on your Instagram, you've got pictures with Drake. And so what are some of those stories and kind of who are your favorite celebrities that you admire? Uh, yeah, there's some cool ones. Uh, I have to say probably uh, Vince Vaughn. Uh, so I met you through Steve Byrne. Yep. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I forget which year it was, but, uh, but they were filming The Dilemma. Uh-huh. And I was kind of the only player that stayed around for the summertime to work out. Uh, so uh, one of the front office guys was like, oh, Vince Vaughn's here filming a movie. I was like, oh, sweet. I was like, huge fan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My first rated R kind of movie was old school. Um, <laughs> and like we, the, our whole team, I just remember our whole team going to the movies and us sitting there watching it and guys pissing their pants because it was so funny. Uh, and uh, so I was like, it'd be awesome to meet him. So I met Vince and then Steve was there and Steve's like, oh, we're going out and having a few beers later. Do you want to come? I was like, for sure. So I went out, had a few drinks with them, had a good time. And from there, I just kept on rolling and uh, became actually really good friends with, uh, with Steve and Vince and uh, a few of the guys. So uh, it's, it's always been fun uh, going out with those guys. Uh, you're basically just on your on your ass laughing the whole night because uh, they're making jokes and, and, and cracking you up. And uh, I think once you get a few drinks in them, they get a little more, a little more into it. So, uh, but yeah, like uh, Vince was always great to hang out with. And he's a great friend of mine. Uh, great guy. Loves the game of hockey. Smart. Uh, knows everything. I think he could run for president. Uh, I think he'd be, he'd be one of those guys. But uh, he, yeah. I remember during, uh, I remember during games, like he, He'd be like, "Hey, what happened here?" And he'd be, he'd be, he'd be correcting me sometimes. But uh, he, he's a student of, he knows everything, and it was, he, he was always great to be around and great to learn off uh, of someone. So it yeah. was pretty fun meeting him. Yeah, he grew up in Chicago, right? Uh, just outside Chicago, I think, just uh, New Buffalo or something like that. So, uh, but he was, he'd come to every game, and uh, he was, he was always there and cheering us on. So he was. He was actually one of the, the big supporters during that, that, that run during 2010. He was, he was at every game, so it was good. It was fun. Oh, how, that is fun. And when's the last time you saw those guys? Well, I know you saw Steve. That's when I met you. And Yeah, then. just in New York there. But uh, it was actually uh, – so Peter Billingsley. He's you know Peter Billingsley? Friend. Yeah, he's married to one of my best friends from high school. Oh, that's oh Theo Buffy. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. So there we go. Okay. So, oh, no way. I, yeah. I don't know if we, we talked about that. Did we talk no. about that? Uh, so Peter, so I met Peter V through uh, through Vince as well, but uh, it was his birthday just not too long ago. We all hopped on Zoom and Aww. wished him a happy birthday. Buffy kind of set it up, and we uh, we all hopped on and, uh, and said happy birthday. So we were all on there with. Uh, see, have you met Ahmed? Yeah, yeah. He remember he yeah. was. There. So Ahmed was there too. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, so Ahmed, Steve, Peter B, uh, a few of the other buddies. Uh, so we all hopped on. So that was the last time. We uh, we all hopped on there, but uh, I was down in LA about uh, a month two months ago uh, and saw Vince and Steve and we all hung out. So it was fun. It's, it was a good time. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. I know. I, before this quarantine, I was supposed to go stay with Buffy and Peter like for a long weekend while I was in LA doing meetings. But of course, yeah, yeah. that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, they're great. I love Buffy and Peter B are great. They're so nice and oh, great yeah. people. <clears throat> Buffy is like one of my, I have so many fun stories with her. But I remember oh. we came to New York and we met at a diner. I said, why aren't you staying with me? You always stay with me. Well, yeah. I, met, I met this guy. And then it was, uh. oh, okay. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was, uh, but they're, they're a great couple. And she's great. But yeah, I know they met in Chicago. So. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. So they, were, they met did in Chicago. Buffy I remember. In What's that? Do you know Buffy in Chicago at all? No, I, I met Buffy. Um, I forget. Went to the wedding. Was at the wedding? Oh, I was at the wedding. So I oh, missed. so there, so we probably just crossed paths. Yeah. So what is I that? Know. Oh. So that yeah, so funny. we were there. That was fun. We had a good time. I had a blast. Yeah. For, for us, it was like a high school reunion. Yeah, I was gonna say for you guys, everybody coming back. So it was, that was awesome. We had a, we had a blast. That was fun. We had a good time. It was good seeing everybody there. So it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. That was definitely. But, uh, awesome. But yeah, I remember Peter B. Yeah, Peter B. was always in Chicago. Uh, and then I, we, we kind of see Buffy around once in a while, but I, I forget when we, we, we actually met each other. But, uh, but yeah, they're just, they're great people and great couple. And we always love having a blast with them. 
Yeah, no, they absolutely are. I'm so glad they found each other because I think they're like a good, yeah, a good fit. So, yeah. Um, so I want to ask about other stories because I know you're holding them back and you have them in there. Oh, like what kind stories. of stories? I want road stories of like the guys. Like, what's the most effed up thing you've seen on the road? Oh, geez, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we're not as crazy. Like, we're not like crazy as like, hey, like, but we'd always have fun. Like, we'd have our rookie parties. So, like, we go uh, see, you do what a rookie party is. I assume it's like an initiation. So, kind of like an initiation. So, like, for my year, uh, we had a rookie party in LA. So, rookies got to go out and you take out the team for dinner. So, we go to a nice place and uh, I forget where we went. We went to this place on right on Sunset. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's done now. This was about 15 years, how many years ago? But um, but uh, but so the rookie's got to pay for dinner. So the bill could be 10 grand. The bill could be 20 grand. Uh, could be 30 grand. So uh, so I remember we were we were pretty drunk uh, and we were ordering uh, fillets. Uh, like we were in like these 150, 200 dollar steaks, and we were basically just throwing them on the street. <laughs> they get oh yeah. We were pretty, <laughs> and like we we're just taking them off and throwing them on the streets and hitting cars and oh yeah, like there's oh yeah, we'd have fun, yeah. But uh, nothing too crazy. We wouldn't we wouldn't have any too crazy stories. Uh, nothing. So anything. Because I feel maybe it's the NBA that I feel like they're a little crazy. I think, oh yeah, I I think they get crazy. Uh, we're not as like we're pretty uh we'd like to have fun we, we all like to go and have drinks and have beers and have a good time uh that's hockey players just like to get drunk and fall asleep basically uh, so, <laughs> so but uh but yeah we always had we, like i'm just trying to think if there's any other stories that we had but uh but it was fun like winning the stanley cup like we had some good parties with that um and we're just going to basically when when you win the stanley cup uh so we won it in Philadelphia. We won it both on the road. Uh, so you basically party in the room, have fun, champagne, and just keep drinking. And uh, you go right to the – so we went right to the airplane, get off the airplane. It's probably like 3 in the morning, and there's crowds of people outside waiting for us. And then we go to a bar, and we just keep going all day and, until you kind of crash. So until yeah. like 12 or, 12 or 1 or 2 in the afternoon, you're like, well, I need to go to bed, get ready for – tomorrow but some some guys went to sleep and you kind of uh you kind of Olivia you kind of like uh cross paths and like some guys would stay out and guys would go home and crash and guys would come back so it was always fun it was we had some good times yeah <laughs> what, what is the reason that the rookies had to pay for the dinner uh it's just initiation like you said like a rookie party so it's kind of like introducing them, them, them into the league and 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 getting getting uh getting like you said, just getting introduced to the team and be like, hey, some guys would you'd have to like just pay for dinner, say a joke. Uh, basically, you just make fun of a, a veteran guy, and guys would love that. So it was always fun. Yeah. So did they did they make enough money as a rookie to afford these dinners? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of these guys. Yeah, but well, you'd, you'd probably have like five or six uh, rookies on the team, so you probably split it up into five grand each or whatever it would be. So I think, I think I paid like five grand. Uh, there was like five or six of us. So. Okay. And do you, you guys have, um, you always, do you travel in suits like the other? Yeah. Yeah. Like? Yeah. Yeah. So we have, we so said we, you have to wear a suit on the plane. And then when you, when you're on the plane, you can take your suit off and put comfy clothes on. Uh, but then you gotta get off the plane, you have to put your suit on. So yeah, it's, it's all professional. Um, so you had to be, you had to be all dealt up. So. Right. And so did, did you guys get your suits paid for or did you have to buy those as well? No, we got to pay. You got to buy it. Yeah, you buy them. You go and buy them. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah we got to go, you get your suits. So some guys, some great, what's that? What was the preferred suit of the NHL? <laughs> uh, Hugo Boss. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, Hugo Boss. Hugo is probably like the, the, the one that most hockey guys wear is Hugo. But some guys, so like some guys take it to another level. And they get them like specially made, and basically, like for me, I get a suit. And I think I got one made, and I was like, I can't stand this, and paid like six grand for like a suit to get made. And basically, 
I just go into a city, I take it off, throw it on the couch and put it on the next day and, and all that. So I was like, I'll just go get a Hugo Boss suit that's probably like a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks. And if I ruin it, whatever, uh, I'll just go get another one. But uh, I'm not going to go get another six thousand dollars suit. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. I didn't know they were that much to have custom made, even in China. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but I think a lot of guys like uh, a few. Some some guys took it for like they, they had some some schnazzy suits going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I've been staring at this painting behind you. What oh, is yeah. the painting of? Uh, it's Jimi Hendrix. Oh wow! Smoking a joint. That's amazing. Yeah. Where, where'd you get that photo? uh some kid in chicago um he did a painting for me and i was like actually i was like i, I always liked Jimi hendrix and <clears throat> some of his music and he's, he's like yeah i can do i can do whatever you want i was like okay sweet so he uh he, he did uh he did the whole painting up and brought it to my house i was like here man just yeah just nice of him yeah it, i mean it's unbelievable just the yeah, detail yeah. in it and yeah yeah the detail and everything into it it's uh it's a cool cool little piece yeah so are you into art uh i'm not really I, I like art i don't really buy a lot of art uh i've got just like a, a chicago blackhawks um painting over here that someone did oh that's cool yeah so that guy that's does really it. cool yeah so that guy so that guy does like he does his paintings in like five minutes he throws have you seen those before uh <clears throat> so he just throws a canvas down and he starts throwing paint and doing a whole stuff and he does he'll do it in like five six minutes yeah oh my god i mean that's some serious talent yeah yeah oh yeah yeah it's, it's crazy he's done he's, he's he's done a few teams but he did ours i seen i seen him do it one time and i was like i gotta get this guy to do one of these for me it'd be great and that was the year we won our Stanley cup so wow that is cool yeah it's amazing and who so who's your favorite sports team as far as like football goes is it the uh the bears okay it's gonna be the bears yeah and hockey, still, the Blackhawks? yeah the Blackhawks yeah I'm kind of I'm kind of I feel like I'm Chicago Chicagoian would you say it a Chicagoian um I haven't heard I, of that. that sounds good yeah yeah yeah. I'll go I'll go with it but uh but yeah like uh <clears throat> it'd be the Bears and the Hawks those are the teams I I go for okay and what about your favorite golfer favorite golfer uh I'll probably go with uh Dustin Johnson Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't I know why. I thought you were going to say Tiger Woods for some reason. Uh, Tiger's great, but I think Dustin Johnson's more like younger. and He's actually, uh, I think he's married to Wayne Gretzky's daughter too. So, uh, Paulina Gretzky. Okay. So he's kind of connected with the hockey hockey side. but uh, I forgot what a, it looks like. I know what Paulina's ass looks like because I see it on Instagram. <laughs> nice. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well taken care of. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of like, what is her secret? There's got to be some lasers going on there. Mm -hmm. it's really good genetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's wrap up with this. Um, what do you think makes up a winning attitude? What makes up a winning attitude? Well, I've never been. That's a that's a serious question there. Uh, I think just as for myself, uh, being positive. Uh, I was always. I was always uh, positive on myself. I never kind of let myself down or got hard on myself. Um, if I played a bad game, I keep that game. I keep all my <clears throat> I keep all my negativity at the rink. I never bring it home with me. Uh, some guys bring some neg negativity home and they kind of bring it out. Maybe not like they, like not bring it out on their wife, but they they, they bring it out. They, they they bring it home and they're kind of like ah oh, shit, like I lost and I didn't do this right. Uh, for myself, I was always positive. Uh, if I had a shitty game, um, I'd kind of leave it at the rink and deal with it at the rink and do all my stuff. But uh, I think just through my whole career, I was just positive about myself and always kept myself up instead of getting down. Uh, I never got negative or got down on myself really hard. Uh, so uh, I think that I think probably one of the main things is, is being positive always. And do you think that came from your childhood? What's that? Do you think that came from your childhood? Uh, I think so, probably. Uh, I was always good when I was playing. I was always one of the top kids. Uh, so um, that was one thing. I, I know my parents always were always behind me and they always kept me positive. 
uh, they never got down on me or uh, it was like, hey, like you, you're playing like shit. <laughs> I, I had that sometimes, but uh, but uh, it was always positive talk and positive energy in my house. So so yeah, it was probably, probably was from a, from being a child. Yeah. So what do you do when doubt creeps in? Does that just naturally happen? Uh, it always happens. Doubt does creep in always, but uh, I, I kind of block it off and kind of put it aside and put it away. But, uh, but yeah, but I, I know when, when I did play, there was always, I'd have a bad game and uh, you, you'd want to break a few steak, sticks or punch a few guys, but, uh, but you can't just do that outside. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, like doubt always came in and, that was always one of those things, but um, I kind of blocked it and uh, didn't really try and think about it in, in the back of my head. Okay, gotcha. So you're, you're, you would consider yourself a pretty positive guy. Oh yeah, uh, I'm pretty positive. And what are some of your favorite books? Like, do you have any self-help books that you would recommend for people to read that kind of keeps you? I, I am not a book reader. I'm, a, I'm, more, I'm more of a visual. I'm an audible. I'm a... <laughs> Watch lots of do- I watch lots of documentaries. <laughs> I'm not really a, a book reader, um, but uh, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't help on that. I couldn't help on that side. What's your favorite documentary? Um, geez. Actually, there's one on uh, uh, this rock climber. Uh, this guy that, that cl- he, he just free climbs. Um, I forget what it's called, but. Uh, it's on Apple, but um, the uh, he, he just free climbs mostly all these these uh, these mountains and does it without rope. And uh, I, I, if I can get it, I can't remember it, but uh, it was it was unbelievable. Like this guy and what he does, and like he he, he free climbs these basically impossible uh, mountains and rock climbs, uh, and does it without a rope. Just does it freely. And it was like, pretty, yeah. like, 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 I was kind of sweating it on the edge of it because yeah. <laughs> kind of waiting, like, if this guy falls, he's dead, like, <laughs> see you later, like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, like, a lot of it, like, his buddies were, he had two of his buddies that were filming and they were kind of saying the same thing, You're like, like, hey, like, this guy's got no rope, if he falls, like, he's, he's dead, we're going to watch our friend die, basically, but uh, he, he accomplished one of the hardest, uh, hardest, uh, rock climbing balls like it was it was it was pretty crazy yeah that's i mean that's insane just going with no rope i mean that that's a new level of insanity yeah like i, I i'm I, yeah i don't think i could do that like that's i'd be i'd be yeah i'd, I'd, be, I'd be a little scared <laughs> yeah so did you see the new jordan doc michael jordan doc oh yeah so that's yeah yeah the last dance that's awesome so I actually have- I, i've been to jo- I've, I've been to michael jordan's house oh tell us about that yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was way back, um, when was it? It was way back uh, when I was playing in 2010. A friend of mine was like, hey, uh, <clears throat> what, uh, it, it was, I had like six buddies over uh, and I, it was an old friend that I knew and he's like, hey, do you want to come to Michael Jordan's house? I was like, yeah, I'm like, but I'm like, I'm like I've got six friends with me. I don't know if I want to bring like a huge, huge crew there. He's like, yeah, bring them on. So we went over there and hung out and uh, it was pretty cool. We stayed. We didn't stay long. Uh, we probably stayed like thirty or forty minutes. Just got to see his place. It was awesome. It was a really cool setup, and yeah, it was pretty cool seeing uh, seeing him there and uh, meeting him. Wow! How big is the house? Just like a hotel? Oh yeah, it was huge. It was massive. It was. He had like a huge pool, like an island. His basketball court. Oh yeah, it was nice. It was crazy. I mean, he is a legend, you know. Oh yeah, interesting. He's he's a huge legend. And just watching like that, the 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 last dance is. It's, it's, it's cool. It's, it's cool to watch. Yeah. It just kind of focuses really on like the drive and the dedication and the. Oh yeah. Thing. And like just, just coming with like the stardom, right? Like what he had to put up with and like, you're always in the spotlight. Uh, <clears throat> like who doesn't go out on, who doesn't you know, talk about like, his gambling? Like who doesn't gamble? Who doesn't gamble on golf? Everybody gambles on golf. Like we all, you, you go out there to play golf like any of us like we all go out and golf and bet 20 bucks 30 bucks and 40 bucks and yeah. bet in the game it makes it makes it more competitive like any one of us as a hockey player as an athlete you're you're competitive and kind of when you, when you go out in the golf course you're like well i'm just not gonna play like let's play for something right like let's bet and have some fun with this and it gets you in the mood and gets you more into the game 
yeah, that's true. You have something to uh, to strive for, right? Not yeah, to, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been amazing. Um, tell us, like, where we can find you. Any foundations that you you want to make mention of? Um, uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm hanging out. Uh, that's about <laughs> it. I'm pretty pretty easy going. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for having me. This was fun. I, I did uh, one of these with uh, I actually did Instagram Live with Ahmed, so uh, I'm nice. getting used. I'm trying to get used to the, the video and back and forth here. So this was fun. I had a blast. Uh, I love doing these. And if you're ever looking for anybody again, let me know. Yeah, you did a great job, and I'm I'm thank you so much for for sitting down with me and taking time out of your day and and yeah, yeah. about Anytime. hockey and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Dave Bowling, thank you so much. And you guys, thanks for listening to another episode of Next to Madison. And we'll see you guys next time to find out who's next. Hi, your host, Madison Malloy here. I just wanted to remind you guys to please follow the show on social media at, at Next to Madison. And if you have any questions or suggestions for the show or you feel that you would be a great guest on the show and would love to be considered, please feel free to email me at nexttomadison at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms. And I thank you again for listening.